Good evening, and thank you so much for joining us tonight. My name is David Norkowitz, the Director of Vocational Technical Programs. This evening will be the second of five live events that Shawshin Valley is hosting to showcase our vocational technical programs. Tonight's event will focus on the programs within the construction cluster. They include carpentry, electricity, plumbing, masonry, and tile setting. With the cancellation of our community open house due to the COVID-19, we have decided that this would be the next best thing in offering you a chance to see our programs. We are recording tonight, so this event will be available on our website so that you can be, so, so it can be viewed at a later date. As you view this presentation, please feel free to post questions that you may have about any of our construction programs. This can be done in the Q&A box by selecting the question mark icon in the top right hand corner and typing in your questions. All questions and answers at all questions will be answered at the end of the presentation, but you can submit these at any time during the event. Please keep your questions to general statements. I would also like to remind you that the deadline for the class of 2025 applications is February 1st, 2021. You can apply electronically by selecting the now apply now link on the Shawshin Valley website on the emissions page. Information about emissions, including contact information, is also available on the admission page. So at this time, I would like to introduce Mr. Brian Smith, the department chair for the, for the construction cluster. Brian. Good evening, everyone, and I'd like to thank you for joining us tonight for this live event. My name is Brian Smith. I'm the department chairperson for the construction cluster at Joshine Technical High School. And I'll be talking to you this evening about the four programs involved, carpentry, electricity, plumbing, and masonry and tile setting. Our carpentry program, our carpentry program as a, or as a carpenter, there are many career paths available to you. Career paths such as a framer, a finished carpenter, construction supervisor's license, or home improvement contractor's license are available to you. The work environment on a daily basis for a carpenter is very, very inviting. If you like change in your life, then you'd like the work environment that you're gonna get as a carpenter. Carpenters one day might be out framing a house. Next day, they could be inside installing a finish on a kitchen or doing the trim work on a residential dwelling unit or doing a commercial fit up. So you live it, you're, you're going to work in a constantly changing environment. In order to become a carpenter, the best avenue for you is to attend Shawshine Valley Technical High School's carpentry program. Our carpentry program is going to prepare you to enter into the workforce with valuable skills and ex experience and knowledge make you very valuable to any future employer that you'll have and give you the confidence that you're going to need to be able to succeed in this demanding field. As a carpenter, you're going to be able to expect a reason, you know, a decent paycheck. Carpenters, these, these, these national numbers that you see on the screen represent national standards. Here in the Northeast, we typically demand higher salaries. So the average income for a carpenter here in the Northeast is going to be higher than these national averages. Coinciding with the job outlook to be a carpenter, we're fortunate to be in the Northeast because we're, we're one nationally in a strong economy, but in the na Northeast and especially in Massachusetts, we're experiencing a boom in housing and other construction right now. So the housing market is up, which drives up the demand for our carpenters and other tradespeople entering into the industry. And these levels of demand are expected to continue for quite some time. 
When you enroll at Shawshank Tech and you enter into the carpentry program, the students at Shawshank Tech, you're going to learn very um, trade specific skills. In the carpentry program, we start off, we do daily safety talks related to the jobs of that day. We never start a job in the carpentry program until we fully review safety and all the aspects required to remain safe while performing your job. You're going to get real hands on life experience working on various projects, both in the shop and out inside of the community. Your shop experience and your related dairy experience are going to kind of be co combined with each other. What we like to do in, in the shop and related theory programs is we like to ensure that we work in a collaborative manner between the instructors and in shop and in related to be sure that the, the two complement each other. So in other words, what you're learning while you're in shop is being reinforced in the related theory room. And likewise, anything you're learning in the related theory room is then being practiced as a hands on skill once you get into the shop or out onto one of our many job sites, either in the community or out on school property. Through our programs here, licensing and certifications are available. Each one of our construction programs, as you'll see as we go through tonight's presentation, each one of our construction fields is going to work and they'll earn our students earn a 10 hour construction card from OSHA. Uh, it's a very valuable card. A lot of our employers like to have it. It's sort of a requirement that's turning an industry right now. We're showing that we're, our students are learning the basic fundamentals of safety and safe work practices in the workplace. In addition to that, last year we began the program of um, the NFPA's Hot Work Safety Certificate, and um, we also earned credit towards uh, carpentry apprenticeship programs. Part of the beauty we have here with the, our carpentry program is a long-standing relationship with a lot of co-op providers. Our cooperative education employers are a lot of local contractors that over the years have built a strong relationship with Shawshank Tech and our instructors. We actually receive phone calls on a regular basis from these contractors asking specifically for us to send their stu our students to them. And a lot of these contractors have retained our students for years after they've graduated from school to continue their training and move on in their trade. Student engagement inside of the carpentry program uh, is terrific. As you can see here, we have some examples of offsite construction work going on through mastering some of the basic skills and techniques that they need for cutting angles and, and nailing and so forth on various small projects in the shop. The next program I'd like to discuss with you this evening is the electricity program. At Shawshank Tech, the electricity program offers the opportunity for a student to join into the program and be offered a, a large number of career paths to them. Uh, becoming an electrician is a licensed trade and we have a structured career path to become a licensed electrician. Uh, our career path for that area would begin with the apprenticeship, moving on to a journeyman and then a master electrician. We have other um, avenues available to us with, through the electricity program to enter into uh, more of a commercial setting to be a lineman working for somebody like National Grid um, and or we work with a lot of supply house contractors as well doing sales, uh, sale counter sales as well as working through distributors and doing distributor sales. So there's a very large number of career pathways available to you through the electricity program. Again, very similarly to the carpentry program, the work environment for electricians can change on a daily basis. You could be a service electrician driving in a service van. One day could be working at a residence uh, installing a range, and the next day you could be wiring a transformer in a commercial setting. You could be running a uh, PVC pipeway in a trench, providing power to buildings. So again, our work environment is very dynamic and can change on a daily basis. How do I become an electrician? Well, best off to start by attending Shawshank Valley Technical High School. Here at the tech, when you come into Shawshank Tech and you, and you join the electrical program, you begin your apprenticeship. Your first day as you're a permanent student in our program, you become an apprentice and you begin earning hours towards licensure, not only hands on field hours, but you also begin to earn the hours required in related theory. To go along with that, we start talking or looking at the income potential that an electrician would have. 
most of the electricians, again, these are national numbers to give you an idea of some of the things going on in our in the Northeast, especially here in Massachusetts and in the five communities that we serve. Our our, our first year apprentice is leaving, going out on co-op and, and after graduation are anywhere in the 15 to $17 per hour range, uh, which is not a bad starting job salary for a 17 year old student. From there, the, you, the salaries range up from there and basically sky's the limit if you want to become your own contractor again coupled with that the job outlook here in the northeast is fantastic in the construction industry right now due to this housing boom that we're having there's a lot of housing a lot of housing under being constructed right now as well as a lot of commercial properties and then around the city of boston there's a lot of uh, work and revitalization going on in a lot of those communities in worcester and boston so uh, again our job outlook in the in the foreseeable future is excellent Students at Shaw Sheen are going to be able to develop skills. When they're in the Shaw program, skill sets that they're going to learn and develop are going to range from the utilization of different wiring methods, uh, from cable assemblies, typically known to most folks as Romex, to different wiring methods using different forms of pipe uh, that they'll have to learn the skills to bend these pipes and so forth. Um, and with those skill sets that they learn, uh, while they're in shop, we also once again tie our related theory program very tightly to our shop program, ensuring that what students are doing and learning while in the shop environment on a daily basis is being reinforced when we're in the electrical theory room. In the side of electrical theory, we do a lot of code discussions, code regulations, code rules, and they do a lot of calculations and understanding why we do what we do as an electrician. Coupled with that, they take that code experience and back into the shop experience with the students and also off into our community based projects. They get to apply the, the knowledge they're gaining in, in the related theory room at the same time learning the skills that they need in shop. As we look towards licensing and certification, I had said previously there's a career path where you have to take as an electrician. You go from an apprentice to a journeyman and then into a master electrician. And through those processes, there's numbers of hours that have to be met. Uh, again, in in all construction trades, we do do the OSHA 10 hour construction card and we do the NFPA's hot works certificate. In addition to that, in the electrical program, uh, we do what they call it's it's on your slide. It says MUP, M E W P, which stands for mobile elevated working platform. Most folks would know those as scissor lifts. So we do a scissor lift training with the students. So when they enter into the workforce, they already have that certification, which is very valuable, which means they can start working uh, in more broad aspects immediately upon uh, entering into that job. Again, we look towards co-op placement here at the electrical program. And again, these are a lot of contractors that we have dealt with for years. Many of these contractors are personal contacts. Uh, and relationships that the instructors in the program have built over the years. Again, these contractors look to Shaw Sheen on a daily, yearly basis, contacting us in the fall, trying to find out when are our kids going to be available because they want Shaw Sheen Tech students. Again, with the student engagement, our students have the opportunity to work and shop with a, a, a great group of instructors, highly knowledgeable with their skills and their craft. Again, and also being able to work in outside community based projects so that we get to give back to our community on a regular basis. Next, we're going to start looking at the plumbing program. Very similar to the electrical program, our plumbing program is also a licensed trade. Also follows very much of the same career pathways. Um, you have to start as an apprentice, then you work your way up to becoming a journeyman and then moving on to become a master plumber. Inside our career pathways, if you choose not to become a plumber, you could become a gas fitter. It's another licensed aspect of the trade. And in order to do any work with gas piping or fittings in the field, you have to have this license, which again would need to be gained by coming through a program like's offered here at Shawshine Tech. Uh, also available to all of our students, again, is the opportunity to become a self-employed contractor. As with all construction trades, as I've said with carpentry and electrical, the plumbers, plumbers also enjoy the opportunity in their work environment to have a, something different every day. Again, if you're working in a service van, 
Okay, you could be installing a garbage disposal one day, fix, replacing a burst hot water tank one day, or you could be off on a job site, roughing out the plumbing systems for a brand new residential dwelling, or in a high rise building down in Boston, roughing out brand new condominiums or storefronts and the such. Again, to become a plumber, best way to do it is to attend Shawshine Valley Technical High School. Here at the Tech, our students come in and they earn hours towards their apprenticeship. Just like an electrician, when plumbers enter their program, they become an apprentice. They begin earning valuable hours during their education with us. And those hours are a significant savings to them when they get into the field. They gain valuable experience while they're in the shop with us and out on co-op. Again, our plumbers enjoy uh, a nice income. Again, these national averages being stated on the screen for you this evening don't re necessarily reflect what we see here in the Northeast. Here in the Northeast in Massachusetts especially, our first year apprentices leaving Shawsheen Tech could range anywhere from $15 to $20 an hour to begin their career. And then the salaries range up from there. And don't forget with any of these, any of these construction trades we've discussed so far, especially in a booming economy, we have overtime available. Overtime is, is wonderful and is a tremendous source to increasing an in income. Again, looking towards the job outlook in conjunction with pay, uh, here again in the Northeast, we're enjoying a building boom right now. And part of enjoying that bo building boom is our plumbers, carpenters, electricians, we're all in demand. Okay, and that's a nice position to be in right now. And that demand for the tradespeople is going to be there for quite some time to come. During their time at Shawshine Tax, our students are going to experience things in the program where they're going to be able to develop the skills required to enter into the workforce as a valuable employee, okay, through the hands-on shop projects that they're doing and our community-based projects. Again, a strong emphasis on safety, a strong emphasis on state plumbing and gas codes are driven into all of our programs, especially in our licensed trades. Safety is paramount. Again, before program, before jobs are begun, safety talks are held with the students. Your shop experience and your related theory experience, again, once again, these two to show the importance, they coincide so well with each other that we, our teachers work very collaboratively to ensure that the related theory experience mirrors that of the shop experience and the valuable information being passed to these students in related theory is being put into practice in shop and the shop experience that they're receiving is being able to be looked at more thoroughly in a related theory setting and as well applying the codes to whatever that particular project or task is. Again, the licensing and certifications, as I touched on earlier, the licensing and certifications for these students, they, they will follow the course. If they want to become a master plumber, they'll become a, a, uh, an apprentice plumber, then a journeyman, then a master, and there's time requirements for related theory, as well as hands-on experience time in the field. Uh, again, these students will have the opportunity to earn and possess a 10-hour OSHA safety class uh, card with them, as well as the hot, safe, the hot work safety program. Again, you'll see here on the on the screen a list of our co-op employers. Again, I sound like a broken record sometimes, but these employers are our local people. These these a lot of these folks that you're seeing up here, these names, these are former students, and that's true across all of our construction programs. Students that attended Shawshine Tech over the years have become successful contractors in our area, and they know the value of giving our students the experience that they had while they were going through Shawsheen and trying to build and develop their own business. So they serve as great role models and mentors for our kids to see what can actually be obtained by coming through Shawsheen Tech. And here you'll see some of the students working here, some of the tools that they have in the tool crib, working on some uh, various different types of plumbing projects, ranging from uh, joining technologies for copper, different forms of uh, PVC, and uh, black steel as well. So now well, last but not least tonight, we're going to talk about our masonry and tile setting program. OK, masonry and masons, masonry and tile setting program. Uh, has a tremendous amount of pathways for them, career paths for them. Uh, bricklayers, tile setters, stone masons, uh, hardscapers, concrete masons. Um, and concrete finishers. These are all 
all these areas, although are very similar, they're also very distinct and require very distinct skill sets. Here at Shawshine Tech, well, let me go back to work environment here for two seconds. Uh, again, the work environment for our, our masons and tile setters can vary from day to day. They could be on a job at a high rise in Boston where they're they're tiling uh, bathrooms, shower stalls and, and the such in these residential dwellings. And they could be there for a year doing that or they could be, uh, you know, setting brick on the facade of a building in downtown Boston or up in Andover or over in Worcester, things of that nature. So again, the career paths and the, the work environments uh, you're inside, you're outside. Again, it's part of the beauty of being in construction. If you get bored, kind of like the New England weather, you get bored, just wait a few minutes and you, your, your environment's going to change. When you attend Shawshine Tech, or the best way to become a, a mason or a tile setter is to attend Shawshine Valley Technical High School. Our program here is going to give the skills that the students need to enter into the field. Uh, They'll begin their experience and their apprenticeship as soon as they enter in to the tile setting and masonry program. Beginning to learn the skills that they need to become to become successful masons and tile setters. And when we look towards salary for these students, as I look towards salary on these students, you know, um, again, these are national averages. Again, I'll repeat myself, Northeast and Massachusetts in particular. Um, our salaries are higher. Masons and tile setters will benefit from that as well. Uh, average first year salary for, for uh, a first year apprentice in masonry and tile setting could range up to $20 an hour. Again, I just and if you take two seconds, folks, just draw your attention to the screen. If you look at the, <coughs> pardon me, look at the, the castle that is being displayed on here, that is an open house project that the students at Shawshine Tech in the masonry and tile setting program put together from a picture. Working with their instructors, they put this castle together to demonstrate the skills that these kids are developing in this program. And this is built with freshmen, sophomore, juniors, and seniors. And this is freshmen during their exploratory cycle, right through our seniors who are out in the field working. Uh, with our co-op employers, but that's a small example of the skill set these kids are learning coming through these programs here at Shawshine Tech. Uh, they never fail to amaze. Wish we really could have had that open house this year so you could have had an opportunity to enjoy and see the, the hard work that these kids put into these projects, not only in masonry and tile setting, but in all programs at Shawshine Tech. Again, uh, our job outlook. These statistics are here for you, but again, Hot housing market equals high demand for folks in construction. Um, skilled masons and tile setters are in extremely high demand. OK, by being in very high demand, contractors are willing to bring you in, pay. You have skills, you have talents, you have the basic knowledge provided to you by coming here to Shawshine Tech and going through our program. Um, you're going to be highly sought after as an apprentice coming out. Again, um, when we look here at this this slide, Again, what are our kids going to experience? They're going to develop the skills they need to enter into um, the workforce. OK, they're going to learn how to lay brick. They're going to learn how to set block. They're going to learn how to mix mortar. They're going to learn how to erect staging. They're going to learn to how to safely erect scaffolding, climb these uh, different things, scaffolding and staging. And again, just draw your attention for two seconds to this screen. This was last year's project, I believe, which was an Applebee's. This is an Applebee's um, here. Don't remember what town it was, but this is a picture one of the instructors took and they came back and they brainstormed. And you talk about collaboration, folks. This project is done in collaboration with our graphic arts and design programs. Those signs were made by those kids down there in those programs. So we love to collaborate with the other other programs here at Shawshine Tech whenever possible. Um, you know, so beautiful work. Again, wish we had the open house so you could see the, the ability that these kids have and the training they receive from their instructors. Again, as we look towards shop and we look towards related theory, uh, again, we'll just draw your attention to the fact that these are so tightly drawn together. Uh, these instructors spend a lot of time ensuring that the instruction between related theory and the, the shop experience go hand in hand with each other and they very closely align to each other to give these students the best opportunities available to learn, reinforce skills and reinforce uh, code and theory related topics. 
We move on to licenses and certifications. Again, here we're going to see that OSHA 10 hour construction card being presented to these students uh, sometime during their junior year, which is when we like to do that program with them in conjunction with preparing them to get out on cooperative employment. And we also do the hot work safety certificate. Again, when we look towards our co-op placement, again, with uh, similar to all of the other trades we've spoken about this evening, um, we look at the contractors here on the screen and these contractors are graduates. Many of these contractors are graduates looking to come back and pay back to Shawshin Tech what they received from Shawshin Tech, the value of their education, the work that work ethics that they've learned while here at the tech. Um, again, and these contractors come in looking for our kids. They come in asking for them. They look for them year after year after year. Um, and that's part of the beauty here at Shawshin Tech. Uh, you know, we offer a wonderful education. There's a lot of highly skilled instructors in the construction programs that are eager to pass on their knowledge and their skill set to the next generations of carpenters, electricians, plumbers, and masons and tile setters. Thank you, and it's been wonderful being able to speak with you this evening. Well, thank you, Mr. Smith. Even I learned something tonight. Wonderful presentation. But at this time, I would like to have my administrative assistant, Helen Hayes, present the quest, some questions that have been submitted during this event. Helen, um, do Hi, we have everyone. Any <laughs> yes, Good. we have like six questions right now, maybe Fan a few more. Fantastic. Why don't we begin and see if we can answer answer the good folks questions tonight? Sure. I first I just want to start off by thanking everyone for joining us tonight and for asking a question. The first question we received is about admissions and it's my daughter applied to Shawshin. When will she find out if she got accepted? Uh, who would like to take that question? Is Andy Andy on board tonight? Yes, Dave, thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Andrew Pigeon. I'm the Director of Community Services and Post-Secondary Programs, and I can answer that. Um, we are accepting applications um, right now all the way up until February 1st. Um, we're looking um, and completing interviews as we speak. So you can apply at any point. You can hop right on our website, click the admissions tab, um, there is a set of directions right there. Um, once we find out um, and receive the application packet and then also complete the interview, um, students will be finding out after February 1st. But it's an exciting time. Um, you can find out and, and apply at any time. So please check out our admissions website and um, you've got nothing to lose. So you have some wonderful opportunities in your sending districts. Well, you might as well take a shot at Shawshin and throw your application in and see where it leads. Thank you, Andy. Another question is what type of off-campus projects does Shawshin Tech do? Uh, Mr. Smith, I, th I think that's right up your alley. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Um, the type of community-based projects we get involved in range anywhere from we, we partner with a lot of local charitable organizations such as Habitat for Humanity, an organization in Tuxbury, Tuxbury Habitat Build. Um, and we try and whenever possible, every year if possible, build uh, a residential dwelling from the ground up. Our carpenters frame it, electricians wire it, plumbers plumb it, and our masons do the, the concrete work, the stairs and so on and so forth on them. We've done work in the town of Bilrica with the Bilrica Police Department uh, where we uh, re rebuilt and repurposed the dog pound for them, literally the animal control center. Um, we've worked in the town of Wilmington working on a field house for the new high school that they had built. So community-based projects are, are everywhere. Uh, we've done a lot of work with Bilrica Housing Authority and also with Bedford Housing Authority. So we love working in our communities and getting our kids out there and getting Shawshin exposed so the, the folks in our communities can see the talent that our kids have. Thank you, Brian. Um, do all the construction programs have current technology? I could probably take that one since that's what they hire me to do. Um, as far as equipment and technology, um, we're very fortunate at Shawshin Valley. Twice a year we bring industry in 
um, and we call them advisory board meetings. And with those meetings, we get direct information on the cutting edge technology and equipment that is out there. And with those minutes, we also have what we call a capital budget at Shawsheen Valley, where we have meetings and we go over all the 24 programs that we have at Shawsheen and we determine a priority list of what technologies and what equipment should be purchased. And currently with the support of the communities, the five communities we serve, and with Perkins federal money grants, we usually on average $80,000 to $100,000 worth of new equipment each year here at Shawshine Valley. So in regards of keeping up on the technology and equipment, um, I'll basically say that is something that we take pride in here at Shawshine, spending close to $100,000 each year to keep each program with that technology and equipment. So um, there's not too many programs here at Shawshine that go without. Thank you. Um, sounds like there's a ton of great job opportunities for students in these shops. Can students in the construction programs also go to college? I guess I'll take that one. Um, I don't know if these are exact figures, but I believe it's up in the 84 percentile that students go on to some type of post-secondary education um, here from Shawshine Valley which is outstanding and out of those, I believe close to 24 to 25% go on to four year colleges. So to answer that question, quite a few of our high percentage of our students go on to some type of post-secondary education, even though they go out and get experience in the co-op placement, which Brian talked about in regards to our co-op program, getting that additional learning experience on the co-op. And uh, as far as the college, we definitely encourage and get our students in the right courses so they are successful when they do go to, to these post-secondary educational uh, institutions. Thank you. Can my kid be a plumber right when they leave Shawshine and when are they allowed to go on co-op? I'll take that one also. Uh, speaking of co-op, that's a great question. Currently, they just changed the regs because of the pandemic, but here at Shawshine, with all our uh, protocol, we don't allow students to go out on co-op until their junior year fourth quarter. We've determined that's a perfect year or time for the fact that there's certain criteria and again, a student being successful when they go out on co-op in the work, and that's maintaining their grades on the academic side, while also obtaining as many competencies from the frameworks to be safe. So we determine that fourth quarter junior year is the appropriate time, which really means they work usually right through the summer and right into senior year with that co-op experience. And I believe Mr. Smith had mentioned that many of our students that get co-op jobs continue to work with those companies a long term right through many of their careers, which is a fantastic uh, indication of the partnerships we have may uh, have developed with all five communities in the in the in the uh, employees that uh, reside within. So that's that's our co-op story and I'm sticking by it. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. I have one final question. It is about emissions. It says that my son recently applied but hasn't heard about his interview. Um, when should he expect to? Like, what should he do? Hi, Dave. Uh, this is Andy again. I'll take that. Um, thanks, Helen. That's a great question. Um, if they have applied and haven't heard about their interview yet, they can be patient. We're going through all of our applications and scheduling them. Um, upcoming at, as they come in. Um, if you check on to our admissions website page, there's contact information for our assistant principal, Ms. Jenna Lesko, and you could contact her or her administrative assistant, Ms. Kristen Utstead, and then they can 
um, provide you with some more information on when your interview will be scheduled. But don't worry, hold on. We've got a lot of applications coming in and a lot of interviews to schedule, um, and we're going to get with them and get through them um, safely and in a timely manner so everybody has the opportunity um, to conduct their interview from there. Thank you, Andy. I just got one final question again. It was, so do we do our shops in the school and do the subjects online? So they're wondering about that currently, I guess. Could you could you repeat that, Helen? What is, uh... Uh, they said, do we, so do we do our shops in the school and do the subjects online? It must be academic subjects. Okay. They must Current be talking currently. Yeah, yeah, currently we're in the model of what we call the hybrid model, and that's exactly what we're doing. So your son or daughter currently would be coming into school every other week to go to their shop because we figure a lot of our programs are hands on, which a lot of the competencies is company competency based curriculum. So without that, we would struggle to do that type of uh, learning online. But as far as the related and the academics, um, I think we got a pretty good handle on it. In my understanding, we're doing a pretty good job with that remotely, fully remote online with the team's meetings and the curriculum that they're, they're currently delivering. But as far as our shops and our technical programs, the students are coming into school. Thank you, Dave. Hopefully next year it'll be back to normal. Yeah, ho hopefully sooner than later. <laughs> All right, that's it for questions. Questions? Well, I guess I'd like to thank everybody for joining this event. And I look forward to having everybody back on January 7th, I believe, which is a Thursday, to learn more about our programs that we haven't discussed yet. That would be the third live sessions out of the five that we currently have planned. So good night, God bless, and I hope to see everybody January 7th. Have a wonderful night. Bye now. There we go, we're ended. All right, we survived great job. another. Yeah, Brian, great job. Very good detail. Thank you. Yeah, yeah Brian. Yeah, awesome job.